What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Kind of Funny Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. How's it going, Greg? How you feeling today? You looking good? It's good. It's going well. I just previewed a game for a long time. I'm embargoed. He didn't say Super anything cool. about it. Don't worry about it. Jealous. I saw it on the calendar. Very jealous. I had a real bad headache this morning after, after Kind of Funny Games Daily going into it, but mm-hmm. then I took some Advil and then Jen ordered McDonald's, so I got all that Ooh. salt and that sugars uh, and stuff going through what me. What was the go-to order for McDonald's? Did it involve an orange? juice no it was lunchtime so i stuck with the the two cheeseburger meal two cheeseburgers fries and a cup of god it's that thing where i don't ever crave soda but when i when you have a mcdonald's soda nothing slaps fucking harder than their fountain beverages Mm. that's absolutely true it's one of those things that uh, it's something that everybody always says greg and it's such a cliche by this point but it still rings true there's no like it's such an obvious statement and still there's nothing there's no truer of a fact in the world than that like trust me dude i went back home i had some whataburger back home love the burgers love the fries love the spicy ketchup it's like the cokes just never hit anywhere sure Sure. that's the trouble of course that voice is the hispanic heartthrob texas treat latino heat clicking heads and ripping them to shreds the globe trotting headshot nitro rifle from twitch.tv andy cortez do you ever when you're on an airplane um, you get that really neat opportunity. It's one of those like really nice kind of underrated moments in life that you don't think about until you kind of focus on. You're like, you know, what? that was a nice thing. And I'm glad that happened. And it's when you're sitting down and you have close to two full windows next to you. Sure. And you have ownership over those two windows. And it just so happens with how the rows of the seats mm-hmm. align and the way mm-hmm. the windows lengths in between are. Because sometimes you only have, sometimes you have less than one, but sometimes you have about 1.8 windows that are next to you that you have full access to. And, you know, sure, that person behind them can reach way forward, but no, this one's clearly belongs to me, even though it ends about, either way, I have access to it. So, like, I'm turning that one off, and I'm turning that one off. And by off, yes, I mean the ones in the big jumbo jets. How does that work? I've never experienced this. Neil deGrasse Tyson, how how do these windows work? Can you explain this to me? I, I don't understand. Well, um, I talked about it on a podcast a long time ago, but it's the first time that I had ever experienced something like that. I'm pretty sure you have, Tim, where it's a it's like always on these big ass. On it. It's always on these big so ass on. like international flights. But for some reason, we were using those flights. I had only ever used that plane when I went from San Francisco to New York one time. Mm. Um, but the for some reason, I had it from Houston to SF and back from SF to Houston. The. They're not shutters, Tim. You're not closing down a light. The window is there, and there's a button with five levels, and there's an up and down on the button, and you yeah. can go... Like tint, uh, tinted on demand, tinted windows on demand. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a digitized... I don't know how it works, though. Like, Nobody knows you, how it works. Nobody the knows. way you're saying it, Greg, kind of is yeah. like, you know, not to be, you know, no offense to you, Greg, but you're kind of like shitting on it. It's not sounding as impressive as it yeah, is. Because, Tim, when you're cool. there, you're like, how does this tech work? Uh-huh. It's how like does it the, work? It, yeah, it's like the CIA where they go like we, they're like we don't want people to see what we're talking about in this cool room, and they hit the button, and the glass just frosts. It's like, yeah, it's like yeah, is like it like the current they put through those remember, showers? Some cool yeah, yeah in remember in London? in RTX London? Yeah, yeah. like yeah. it's it's similar to that, Tim. But it's like you're seeing through. It's clear as day, clear as glass as day, and then it just turns darker and darker and darker to the point where cool. it's almost like impossible to look through unless you get like really really close up. But it makes the outside look like nighttime. I don't get how it works. We're going to read from a Wired article filed by Alex Davies back in April 2016. Shades are so 2015. These airplane windows tint themselves. Innovation in aviation is a funny thing. Thanks to that pesky sonic barrier, commercial air travel isn't getting any faster. Until we can reduce the time spent in the air, improving air travel is all about working with the experience and being a better place. Uh, this usually... Oh, fuck it. The top tier supplier thinks uh, plastic shades are for lamoids and the right way to block the sun is to make the window transition from transparent to opaque using microscopic particles within the pane. Those particles are contained in a film sandwiched between layers of polycarbonate or glass. Then voltage is applied to the film. The particles align to let the light through. Shut off the power and the particles go into disarray and the company claims block more than 99% of visible light. Adjusting the voltage changed the opacity of the window. It is electricity. Yeah, you can put your cool. phone up to it, charge it that way. 
I'm yeah. not trying. Well, look, what I'm they not... want you to do is lick it. They say put your tongue on it. You get a little buzz. It's like a, a battery. Buzz, buzz. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little Nick, buzz. I'm not trying to shit on this, right? Because I'm very grateful for that technology existing. I think it's mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. It's a cool thing. It feels very futuristic. Yeah. But aren't we, aren't we getting to the point with these planes where? They're switching to certain materials to make it lighter to save on gas mm-hmm. and on fuel. And like, um, I don't know where I was listening to this, but uh, like the trays that they give you or whatever, like they're cutting down on weight by the fucking like tiniest of cents or whatever. But then it adds to several hundreds of thousand dollars of savings over the year on fuel costs where hey, the cups they're giving you, now they're making them thinner paper so they, they all weigh less. And yes, it's like the tiniest change ever, but it really does make a difference. How much does this tech cost? Oh, maybe, you know, the shutters on the planes? Maybe that's part they're, of the weight that yeah, they're shaving. Those probably do add weight, that's for Holy sure. Shit. And the second thing, the second thing, Andy, that I just wanted to go back to real quick was the, the uh, we have a lot of unwritten rules here on the Kind of Funny podcast, uh-huh. right? Uh, of course, we've talked about the, the Pepperoni Pizza Diplomacy Act uh-huh. uh, of 2019, which has been, I, I think, far and away the best thing we've ever introduced into the world. Mm-hmm, uh, sure. I would also like to amend that act at some point while I'm on the subject, Andy. Sorry to, oh. not, sorry to segue away from we're the segue. Okay. But we need to have, as, part, as far as the Pepperoni Diplomacy Act, for the single serving slice of pepperoni pizza, do not start with cheese and then throw a piece of fucking pepperoni on top of that and then put it in the oven for me. That is not a pepperoni pizza. That is a cheese pizza with two slices of pepperoni you put on top of it, fucking Victor's. And I'm, t- I'm oh, tired wow. of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of this I, shit. Okay, you meatballs on the fucking, fucking bomb. Victor's. <laughs> <laughs> but what I wanted to say was, if you have to reach on the plane, my rule is, if you have to reach behind you to access something, that doesn't belong to you, right? So if the person has to reach behind their shoulder to shut the shutter, then that is no longer their That's shutter to shut. Yeah. That is your mm-hmm. shutter to shut. I'm not mm-hmm. shutting that shutter. Shut sure. the shutter, please. Somebody shut the shutter. Yeah, exactly. This sounds like a science. Shut the sketch. shutter so I can use the shutter. I'm shutting you know the saying? shutter. Well, don't you be shut shutting the, the shutter. shutter. The shutter's shut. You it's know? shut. Anyway, I just wanted to talk about that because I love having that feeling of having access to both the windows. Oh, I think that's amazing. There have been times where I, I, I'm blindfold on. I got my fucking like yeah. sleeping mask. I, and I'm just crashed out. And I felt like the, sh- the shoulder tap. And I'm like... <sighs> Yeah, and I wake up and they're like, can you open the window? I'm like, like what? No. what? No. no, you fucking no. heathen. You have a window. And here's the other thing too is, again, you want to talk about proper plane etiquette. We already talked about the foot stuff with, with Shannon Woodward. Right. Every, I think we're okay on that. I think everyone understands our, our – Don't take your feet out, your shoes off. Don't take don't, your shoes don't, I want to see your fucking – I don't want to see the hair on your toe. I don't want to see that ever. And I swear to God if I see a, your foot and it's dirty underneath it, I'm kicking you out of I don't want you. I don't want to see your socks either. No, no fuck you, Greg. Your shoes on, you're in Go public. Hell with that. I'm just going to take it a step further. Don't wear flip-flops, period, unless you're going to the beach. And even then, think about your decisions in your life. No, I can't get behind that. I can't get behind that. You're nasty. You're nasty. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. This is where we diverge. This is where the two yeah. roads diverge. You've taken the road. Robert Frost. Traveled, apparently, Robert Frost. I, I'll just, I will never understand how so many women are comfortable walking the streets of San Francisco wearing forms of sandals where I'm like, Jesus Christ. And then there's dudes that have foot fetishes. I don't know how those two things add Tim, up. Tim, let's I mean, not be hard on the guys out there that have foot fetishes that rate me and Greg on Wiki Feet really high. Okay, let's not. Thanks for rating us. They have really their perspective. Feet, everybody. They have, have their perspective. perspective. Tim, can we, also, can we also add people that FaceTime in public? I mean, oh, yeah. No. That is, can uh, we for add sure. people who FaceTime as default? This is some shit. This is like a parent thing to do. My dad has started doing this where I just I'll see the FaceTime. And then I just see the, either the top of Big his loop. head or no picture whatsoever. And I don't like – like I don't like to have to hold my fucking phone out like this. Or I don't like to have – he does it on his computer and then I see like the back of his head because his camera's over here. He's got eight monitors. Right. No. Just let me fucking I feel that, be on the phone. My mom will Greg FaceTime Moore. me for the dumbest shit and it will just be oh, like right. a 10-second FaceTime of like, hey, I need right. to ask you a question about this. She's supposed like, right. to see you. I mean, it's just like it's a te- it's a text message, mom. Come on. I'm a yeah, FaceTime text text with my mom kind of funny. Tonight. Two things. Number one is just the throwaway punch in the face, and we're gonna let it lie and go on. Also, people send in voice memos. Uh, Janina Gavankar, knock it off. T- just text. Just be a normal person. And text, <laughs> just text right? it. Uh, Austin, no. Austin Creed, stop. T- stop it. Just text me or call me, but don't do don't do this in between thing. The amount of times I see these, and I'm like, well, I'm not gonna. I can't listen to this right now. So. I couldn't take a phone call and I can't read it, so I can't respond to it. Period. Like if it was a text, like you should have done. What I'm I was with, raising I'm my with hand Kelly for, Adams. Huh? I'm with I'm with Cully Adams on this one. 
I forget what is he said. I, I like know. the voice memos. You're you're a monster. Oh, that, well, I send you voice memos all the time. You don't really respond to them. You, you just make fun of me on, <laughs> really? on your streams about it. It's really weird because I try to be a really good friend and you just make fun of me all the time. When have you sent me um, In the live chat over on patreon.com slash kind of funny, I have a follow-up for the one, the only, the Tim Gettys. Uh, of course, Forbes 30 under 30, a.k.a. the second best baby blues, a.k.a. the engaged one, Tim Gettys. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tim, Danny tomeo wants to know i understand tim's stance on sandals but i live in florida is florida exempt from your sandals rule florida has its own set of rules uh, in many yeah, there's ways. no rules and then and that's the thing is i was saying if the, if the beach is involved you kind of get the the, the pass and like florida is essentially just the beach so it's sure. like i'm okay with that i'm a little more okay with that life's a i'm beach, still not know? planning on sucking on those toes but like <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're right. Too. Like everything's nasty in Florida, so I just feel like it's all just kind of a, a free go there, you know. Yeah. And why are you still hung up on the the toe thing? Is interesting to me. Why? Because like, kind of funny. He's always been very pro eating ass. Like, so you assume the ass is getting washed before it gets eaten. Wouldn't you assume the feet are getting washed before they get into somebody's mouth? Not every time. No. Obviously, you get you're crazy. You're no, wild. I don't. I don't think so. On either I mean, one I, of them. I, I just you're not watching that, the like, ass or the feet. I, I, I feel like uh, this is going down a path that I didn't mean to take it. Like I'm not. Uh, there's no kink shaming involved in this. I'm mm-hmm. talking about just like oh, no, the, no. Nor- the normal. Uh huh. I don't think you're kink shaming anybody. I think you're just saying, hey, people like to suck feet. That's great. But like, would you want to suck a San Francisco foot? No, because it's gross outside. And then people would, and that's that's their prerogative. That's fine. I'm just we'll saying, say. I'm surprised at how people that I would consider cleanly like cleanliness Cleanly. is a factor for them right sure. like they care about it and they like strive for that are just walking around with their feet just exposed to the elements of the streets of san francisco sure sure, sure and i don't sure. even want to make it a san francisco specific thing it's anywhere but the streets of san francisco are specifically a disgusting cesspool sure also let me also throw out there greg yeah buddy <sighs> it, i mean again i only took four flights it's fun but on 50% of the four flights, some might say two of the flights, I'm dealing with families that are doing the, hey, something happened with our tickets because we're separated. No, you know what you did. Yeah, you know. Don't fucking act like you yeah. don't know you what happened. I don't know. It says it said 36 F. No, 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 no. There's no fuck ups on a plane. You're yeah. getting the ticket. You You're tickets. all looking at each other's tickets and going, oh, they put you over here because of blah, blah, blah. Like, you know what's happening. Don't walk up to me as if you were just thrust into this random situation mm-hmm. and the person next to Oh my gosh, Greg, I'll tell you what, the first flight, I was so excited because this lady, she's sitting in B and I, I got A, the window seat, and there's a guy in C and I'm thinking B and C are a couple, but no, they're like, she's separated from her family because she knew what she was fucking doing just like tim gettys knew what he was doing she knew what I she knew. was doing i knew and i'm like oh i have a a right there and she kind of gives me like the guy's like okay cool and he's gonna get up and the gr- woman gave me this look of like oh, fuck she gave me this look and i was like what's wrong so i just kind of like hopped over and and she and then i immediately Rip go apart. headphones on she leans over to guy and see and she goes hey um yeah it's because my, my family's sitting over there this and that and she's like well would you be cool like switching with me because i think they were in the aisle seats in the middle and the guy was like no because i blah 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 and she's like okay well that's fine whatever so she she goes away and i'm like great empty seat here this is fucking fantastic mm, I'm loving this no. <laughs> Man, that person's got to show this something's got to happen to that person <laughs> so, suddenly she comes back with her goddamn kid and no it's not no no, no. she sends a stewardess after this man in seat c the stewardess walks up to man in seat C, and I've got my headphones on full volume, and I just see the man look at him, and I was like, oh, dude, don't do this, don't do this. And I see him look, and he's like, and he grabs his shit. I'm like, no, dude, no, 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 no. And then he walks away. I'm like, oh, he's gone. He's gone forever. He's gone. She comes back. She takes B and C because she was separated from her child. Sure. And now they were in B and C right next to me. This little fucking baby would not shut go. the fuck up the whole mm-hmm. flight, dude. Mm-hmm. I got this soundproof headphones. Sony, you can block out airplane engines. Why not kids? That's just ridiculous, dude. You gotta get the you gotta get the Sony blockout kids headphones. See, you got the you got the general purpose one. Damn you gotta get the ones. And I, I'll I'll show you what they uh, uh, online when we're when we're done with the podcast. I'll show you what they look like. They look like little mini bottles of Jack Daniels. You get about oh, five okay. six of those in your in you, <laughs> and it blocks out. They were you introduced at CES. You don't hear nothing what you want to hear. <laughs> I was so, I was so mad. I was, the I'm like, Andy, crazy. You stuff know what's our wrong. neighbor. 
our neighbor just came back from a trip and they had the nightmare that in O'Hare, their plane got canceled. They had to get rebooked and it's, it was, uh, they're a couple and then they have three kids and one of them's like a super young kid. So I'm sure it's a lap infant or whatever, but they all got middle seats. And so then it was the panhandle. Like, I'm so sorry. Everything's gone to hell. I'm not saying this is that this woman next to you. You know what I mean? That's a different story. I'm not trying to, I'm not making any excuses for her, Andy. I know you're in first class with your tinted windows and all this stuff. You paid for it. You paid for something. Let's let's back up here for a second because I think we've we've established a lot of things here that I think are good. We are, I think the, the Andy on the dossier, I think we, we've, we've talked about the feet thing. I think we're all in the same uh, boat about this one. Tim's weird about the sandal thing. Tim, I'm going to buy you some rainbow sandals. You're going to get into it. Don't worry about it. I feel like I do. I do want to throw out though um, another rule on the plane: if it's sunny out and the sun's peering into my eyeball, you have to shut the shut the fucking thing. Just shut shut it. The shade. I okay. shouldn't have windows. I'm gonna say it. They, everyone else is wow. afraid to say it. You wow, say it. maybe you're right. That's you a choice. Right. That's a bold claim. What if they had yeah. LED walls that just showed you space? Wouldn't that be super? Cool? That would be fucking cool. Honestly, with, the, with windows, they should only be available like when for takeoff and landing. It's kind of neat to look outside. Otherwise, nah. It's too. What about hot. a glass Breaking bottom metal. plane? That would be terrifying. That'd be that very, would be absolutely very terrifying. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> very hot, very terrifying. But I will say, Greg, to your point, like, obviously, we're kidding. If you have to sit, like, you should sit next to your child on a plane, right? But it's do you acting. need to, does the whole family have to be together? Because that's, I've seen that sometimes. We're like, hey, we're not, we're not sitting together. And, like, sometimes you'll see it, like, with the dad sitting with one kid, the mom sitting with the other kid. Obviously, yeah. then you can pay, then you can absolutely tell, like, who the parents, the kids prefer. Because like the get the kid with the dad's like fuck this sucks and the kid's like I'm in heaven because mom's cool and dad works all day I don't really know him I don't have much of a relationship with him yeah uh, but like when they're all trying to reorganize shit to sit together I'm like no you're a fucking family you're together all the time you can deal with an hour of not being like near each other for right now that you know, I'm just with happened. Andy where it's like just just make the decision and plan ahead and pay for well it. no but like, to, to Greg's to Greg's uh, point earlier that may have been what happened here like their flight got canceled there or is something a rare- and rare chance that like a chance a situation like greg's talking about is the reality i think that 99 percent of the time it's people that just didn't want to fucking pay for the right seats it's more of the acting it's more of the putting on a show of like yeah i'm not sure what happened no no no. you knew you, you knew. Fucking knew you didn't just walk on here and be like oh well they have f and i have b i thought we were sitting together clearly there's several areas in between and on the way back from Houston to San Francisco, the oh. same goddamn thing with a different family, except homeboy in the back. She was like, well, yeah, it's because I, I was hoping we could sit together. He's like, no. He was like, well, what, what kind of seat is it? And she goes, aisle. He goes, no, sorry. Like, I, I want the window. Yeah. She's like, okay, well, I mean, he's going to have to sit here then with you. And he was like, fine oh. by me. And she was like, are you sure? He's like really young. And he was like, I don't care. I'm going to put on my headphones and go to sleep. Yeah, what am yeah. I going to do? I'm not baby. I'm not talking to this. I don't think Yeah. I'm like, and I was up. like, good for you, man. Like you fucking stood up. Oh, you didn't I would've... cave in. Andy, Nick, I would have caved like, in so hard. I would have fucking caved so fast and so hard. I would have been stuck on like a five hour flight. Yeah. I'd be in the fucking in one of the overheads. Yeah. I'm like, I'm fine. <laughs> it's not a big deal. They're like, sir, can you sit in the tray table cart? Like, yeah, sure. Well, because I, I feel like the, the problem is people are like, you know, that the entire plane's watching you without watching you. You're being judged. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, if you like, everyone would like to believe, oh, stand up, like you booked this flight and you got the good thing and like whatever. But like we'd all we'd all fold we'd all fold like a deck of cards, man. I'd fold for sure. Unfortunately, One Tim would get mad at me for was folding. Me and Damon were going to some convention, some trade show. I don't know what it was, but it was we were at the back of the plane. And it was one of those, like, you know, they're about to close the door. This group of kids got on or whatever, finally. And they were all out of breath. And there's no more room in any of the things, the overheads. But this kid was going all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. He had a skateboard. He was trying to fit in the overheads. And he kept trying to open it or whatever and like the stewardesses up front would stop him and be like no you can't do that or whatever and then by the time he got back to us the flight attendants were doing something else and so the dude tried to open the one above damon damon was on the aisle and uh damon was like you can't this f- they're closed because they're full and the kid's like oh and he's like he realizes he's out of options like there's no more where else to go so he just looks at damon and go can i put this under your seat <laughs> Dave was like, "No, that's where my bag is." Yeah. <laughs> this kid was just like, "Oh," and they had to, you know, check the fucking. <laughs> was like, <laughs> his last dish hairy effort was hoping this one person had enough room under their seat for it. The laziest thing possible. <laughs> God bless it. I hate to see it. Yeah. What I love to see though 
is this show, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. This is the kind of funny podcast each and every week for sometimes five best friends gather on this <laughs> table, each coming to bullshit with each other about whatever it is they want to bullshit about. If you like that bullshit, you can head over to patreon.com slash kind of funny to be part of it with your questions, your comments, your concerns, everything under the kind of funny sun. Of course, on patreon.com slash kind of funny, you can get the show ad free. You can get it with the exclusive post show we do. You can get your questions right on the air. You can get your name right on the air. And of course, you could be watching live as we record it like Omega 3 is keegan hill is and louise aguirre Agu- is uh if you're watching live you don't have to worry about anything i was gonna say you correct us when we're wrong and stuff but that's a games thing we don't care if we're wrong on this show fuck you uh <laughs> however if you have no bus to toss ourselves to be it, paraded live on the air no big deal you can get each and every episode of the kind of funny podcast on youtube.com slash kind of funny roosterteeth.com and podcast services around the globe each and every week twice a week often with guests housekeeping for you uh tim and i did and joey actually did a kind of funny town hall updating you on all this stuff for the second half of the year as we get ready to close this bitch out and go into the new one and get ready for a brand new studio it's up on youtube.com slash kind of funny right now thank you to our patreon producers julian the gluten-free gamer and steve powers today we're brought to you by canva and stamps.com but i'll tell you about that later for now tim gettys read an article and wants to tell us about it I do. And I, I'm honestly kind of happy that Kevin's not uh, running the show today. And instead, it, it's it's Barrett on the ones and twos, because there's a couple trigger words that are going to be used today that um, I think would just Star Wars turn. Hats. No, six Brimless. flags, six flags oh, is, oh, uh, is what I'm talking about. Flags. So uh, you want to go th- right now? Should we go right now? Exactly. Um, so an article came my Chachi. way uh, a couple days ago about Six Flags Discovery Kingdom, the place that we went infamously and told the whole story about on the podcast Ethan, a couple yes. months ago, right? Um, but we we told stories of how, like, growing up, we would go there, but it used to be called Marine World. Like, it was a, a different type of amusement park. And this article that found me, I didn't look for it, is called Remembering Marine World, the Bay Area's Most Controversial Theme Park. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm interested. I don't remember there being controversy. Like, (laughs) it felt kind of on the up and up, but all right. So I started reading through this article, and about three paragraphs in, I'm just like, holy shit, here's the podcast. (laughs) Like, this is one of the most insane stories I have ever heard. So I'm just going to, I'm going to read it to you guys. Okay. All right. And and there's, there's some twists, there's some turns, and it is insane. So... Over the years, memories of the animals blurred with memories of the roller coasters. Now stripped of its aquatic name and rebranded Six Flags Discovery Kingdom, Marine World feels like any other California theme park. But once, it was the strangest, boldest, and most controversial animal attraction in the Bay Area. A dolphin named Dr. Spock was watching when a diver entered his tank to make repairs on a late February day in 1978. Oh, wow, that was a long time ago. So already I'm like, where is this going? What's Dr. Spock up to? The diver was careful not to leave any tools within reach of the curious dolphin, but while unscrewing a large bolt, it slipped from his grasp. Quick as lightning, Dr. Spock dove down and to the horror of everyone watching, swallowed the bolt in one sharp gulp. Oh no. The staff of Marine World went into action. They pried open Dr. Spock's mouth to make sure the bolt wasn't just hiding below his girthy tongue, and x-rays were ordered up. Alas, those confirmed the metal bolt was indeed deep in his innards. Oh, deep, veterinarians, deep, deep Spock. veterinarians and doctors for humans were rushed to the theme park to inspect the beloved mammal. Surgery would be too risky, Vet said. The best thing would be what Nick Scarpino just said. If someone yeah. would stick their arm down Dr. Spock's That's neck right. and fish the bolt out with their fingers. Now, hold on, Tim. Mm-hmm. How big of a bolt? I don't know. I mean, because it's, it's a bowl for a tank, so you have to imagine it's probably pretty. It's probably one of those thick. big, thick ones. Yeah, yeah, that's why. That's why I'm kind of wondering because I, I think the like Andy, the emphasis you... and danger that they're sort of putting around this situation is like for a normal bowl. How the fuck would you even see that in water if it's mm-hmm. a little tiny thing? But it's got to be a big ass chunker. Yeah. For, con- I, for context, I think we chunker. could probably bring up the scene from Ace Ventura when he goes into the dolphin tank, and he does the James T. Kirk like. Star date 44, 44, 44. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I funny mean, you bring that up, Nick. Remember that parallels. for a future part oh, of the story. Whoa. <laughs> so, uh, continuing on, Lovely. it's about to get crazy, guys. If you've not looked at the physiology of a 12 foot bottlenose dolphin lately, perhaps a photo will remind you this is not a task for normal sized human arms. It's been about a week I've looked. Yeah. Oh, my Despairing, God. Despairing, kid. The Marine World staff contemplated what to do next. It was then that park CEO, Mike Dimitrios, had an idea. Why not ask the tallest humans he knew? 
the Golden State Warriors. Shut up. <laughs> this is the coolest Urgent thing ever. call was made to the team six foot nine center Clifford Ray. Ray was supposed to be boarding a plane for a Warriors road trip, but since he was injured, he wasn't expected to play. He boasted an incredible reach of nearly four feet, and he said he was ready and willing to help the ailing Dolphin. Nah. When Ray arrived at Marine World, his fingernails were trimmed and his right arm was thoroughly lubricated. Okay, first off, why not put a glove on? That was my first thing. I'm like, I'm putting a fucking glove on. I, lo- I love that he's going well, in raw. In case dog it like slips this, off, uh, like when, when he's coming back, right? Like something exactly. could, like worse. Worse. on the worse. glove, and then he's choking on the glove. Nick, you're missing out. We got the we got a whole other team of basketball players we can bring in to get that glove. We're, it, it, I would have gone the opposite way. Get the smallest basketball player we know and send him down the gullet. You know, just get Muggsy oh, Bogues. Send Bogues, in. Bogues send all in there. Bogues in there. You want to interspace it? Yeah. <laughs> when Ray arrived at Green World, his fingernails were trimmed and his right arm was thoroughly lubricated. A vet from UC Davis was put on speakerphone to talk Ray through the procedure. He had three minutes any longer and Dr. Spock's breathing would become dangerously in- inhibited. What the hell, guys? This is well, insane. Shout out to the fact that like, all right, yeah, stop this guy from getting on a thing. Drive him over here. We need this mm-hmm. basketball player. The fucking doctor can't drive up. <laughs> I got to get him on speakerphone. He can't be in the room. The coach. He's like, he's like, guys, I'm four blocks. I'm away. really I'm busy. Like, I know I'm this is totally busy. in my wheelhouse, but I'll, uh, you know, I'll give you five minutes. All right. I'm at, I'm at a McDonald's. I can call you from there. <laughs> I'm going to pay 45 five minute drive. Call. Get a coffee but, and a fish filet. <laughs> uh, Ray felt around the soft folds of the dolphin's stomach, gently Ugh. probing for hard ah. metal. With two minutes and 30 seconds lapsed, Clifford yelled, I've got it. <laughs> the San Francisco Examiner reported, and his arm came back out of Dr. Spock's mouth at the 2.55 mark. Wow. <laughs> Dr. Spock took a few laps around the tank, satisfying his handlers that he was feeling spry once again. The Examiner said Dr. Spock swam back to Ray and met his pr- proffered hand with a flipper high five. Oh. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. That, that did, did not happen. That did not happen. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike a zoo where animals are simply animals, Marine World has humans and animals romping together. This was for better or worse, the truth. Wait, I'm sorry. I missed the part. Did they not anesthetize the dolphin before somebody yeah, I thought they would. Yeah, that, their I hand know, down his throat? It was 1978, Nick. Because, like, that. imagine. Well, I mean, they. I guess it's a good point. <laughs> anyway, I mean, it's stupid with me. But just imagine this, right, Greg? You're yeah, a highly I'm, paid basketball I'm not gonna say superstars because I think back then the Golden Gate Warriors weren't that weren't that Golden great. State. Old, Golden, Golden Gate Golden, Warriors, the old Golden Bay Warriors. <laughs> but you start going, okay, I'm in on this, right? I'm gonna, sh- I'm, in. I've You're committed up. to being the hero that this this city needs, right? I can't win a basketball championship, but I can Indeed. shove my arm down a dolphin. Steph throat. Curry's just two years old at this point, yeah. And and you get no. there. And they're like, okay, here's the dolphin. And Snow, what the fuck's the name of the dolphin? Buttercup, Snowflake, what is it? Dr. Spock. Spock. Dr. Spock, Mr. Spock. Chekhov p- comes up to you and he looks you in the eye and they go, go for it. And you think to yourself, I'm good. You're like locking eyes with this dolphin as you're slowly starting to penetrate its mouth and shove your hand down into its throat. Yeah. Are you okay with this? Because I'd be like, at least. Give him a little shot of something, a little, a little painkiller, maybe a little vodka, I, a little something, something. Yeah, that's my thing. Is I that's where I know little to nothing about the insides in the the psi of a dolphin uh, mouth or whatever. But I don't care how many people are there holding it open, what kind of contraptions they have strapping it down. Yeah, I'd be afraid of it jerking out of it, getting out of there, and slamming it down. Then my basketball arms uh, maimed. I can't yeah. go out there and be a center. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm definitely trust going me. I hand. guarantee you. The, if, you know. If the Golden State Warriors know, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm on injury reserve. Like, yeah, just, you know, stay home. Don't come to the road game. Rehab. All right, cool. And then I get a call, and I'm like, well, I, you know, if I, if I have to call them in 10 minutes, to be like, guys, bad news. I, I'm hurt worse than I thought. Oh, yeah. what happened? The, the injury. Dolphin. Not that one. I got like, <laughs> bit really badly by a dolphin. You're Jesus like my, Christ, my... you were in the ocean and this happened to you? Well, no, nope. not exactly. I put my hand down the throat of an unanesthetized right. uh, fucking dolphin. It's just a silent pregnant pause. I'm going to need a few more details. Than <laughs> so, so moving on, that's the end of that story, which okay. is insane. But there's more to the, the controversy of Marine World. So uh, back in 1968, it first started. And the, the first couple animals, they got some dolphins. They got some penguins. People were pretty stoked about that. But then next, two orcas were brought in uh, from British Columbia. The killer whales were shipped via plane to SFO with handlers spraying them with seawater throughout the flight. That makes sense. 
it makes sense but wow that's interesting uh they were among a handful of killer whales that were ever held in captivity uh shout out to free willy classic movie Mm -hmm. um but then came judy the elephant she famously could water ski (laughs) what bear can you please thank you thank you here's judy what the fuck is it (laughs) she became we always talk about how bulldog skateboard yep here's this elephant elephants yeah now let me blow y'all fucking minds right dope. now. All right, this is super dope. Your... Judy's still so alive and surfing to this day. <laughs> Judy, Judy had a companion uh, that did not water ski, named Margie. Margie mm-hmm. once found herself dressed up in horns and a woolly sort of beard at the behest of a man named George Lucas, who was shooting a movie called Star Wars. The Bantha you see on Tatooine is Margie the elephant, and the Tusken oh. Raider was her Marine World trainer. <laughs> That is awesome. What the fuck? Awesome. Um, then can you can you please bring up the tiger picture, Barrett? They eventually decided that they gotta get some fucking tigers involved. So they made a in the, Marine World? The, the Tiger this Center. Is a terrible idea. The Tiger Center this is in nineteen ninety seven. So here's here's probably Jim and and you know, some other guy dealing with a, a tiger. Um after that. The, the part that I really wanted to get to for you, Nick, mm-hmm. is this next picture, Barrett, if you could please bring it up. A killer whale jumps over William Shatner. Shut. <laughs> Captain uh, Kirk himself. <laughs> I would, okay, first off, I would not do this were I William Shatner. I just feel like that is Would a, you do this, Nick Scarpino? No, because that whale weighs a, at least, what do you think, deuce, deuce and a half? That's That's like a... That's a couple tons right there of, of, of whale meat that could come down on top of you and just smash you into the ground. I don't think that I would trust this at all. I'm also just not a fan of like whales in captivity after that SeaWorld documentary that Hayden Pintieri did. Sure. It's just a terrible idea. But I mean, I'd fucking definitely hang out with William Shatner, wouldn't you? You're, you did once, mm-hmm. remember? Can't well, say. we hung out in a room with William Shatner, but Kevin and I both wussed out from saying what's up to him. And I think in hindsight being 2020, definitely still the right call. Because yeah. I don't, I can't see, I can't see <laughs> Bill Shatner liking me. I just can't see. Really, I think he'd like you fine. I just think, no. All right, I don't think let's he likes do anybody. Some, let's do okay. some role playing here, Greg. You're William Shatner. Okay. You've been to this is your thirtieth convention of the year. Yeah, they're all the same. They're all blurring together. the The convention guys that set this up were great, but your flight got messed up. You had to fly coach instead of first class. It was huh? super embarrassing. Yeah. All you want to do is sit down and barbecue. have a bowl of whatever this barbecue is that that's sure. that's coming at you. It smells good. It's from a historic Kansas City barbecue place. Sure. You're excited about this. You lock. You look up and two strombolis over in the corner. Sure. Looking like me and Kevin Coelho are like yeah. giving you the side eye. Like, let's go talk to him. Let's go talk to him. Sure. You're going to tell me you're overjoyed to have to sit with us for Again, what could be an indef- in, in undetermined amount of time and talk to us. No. But well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, that's opposite pass. of what you said. You mm-hmm. had said that, you know, it was the right call. I agree it was the right call. But then you said, I don't think William Shatner would like me, period. You didn't quantify it within that instance. Of course, in that instance. I sat next to William Shatner. I ate barbecue. I didn't mm-hmm. talk to this man. We're in the green room. You know what I mean? Nobody wants yeah. to be talked to back there. We're in the green room prepping for the infamous Henry Winkler panel. Oh, that's right. We were. <laughs> right before we got winked. Right before we Man, I said for two winked. nights straight. I watched like three Henry Winkler movies just to get <laughs> prepared for that. Just to make sure that I really, I could, because I was going to be the guy, Greg, that was going to yeah. be like, you know. I was going like, to be the one who got through to him. I was going to go deep <laughs> on some of his early work. And have to be like, you know, you know when you have that, like, you watch the press junkets and someone's like, oh. They're like surprised, like, oh, that's actually a really good question. And then they're engaged, and then you're uh-huh. like, we're friends now. I'm going to get them on the podcast. This is going to be my ticket to the big time. And Henry Winkler was going to get us there, guys. Henry Winkler was going to be the guy that got us to a million subscribers. I well, I mean, if him. you open the door to Henry Winkler, he opens the door to Hollywood. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, everyone out Who there knows. doesn't Henry Winkler? Somehow. Exactly, yeah. You know what I mean? That's such you a good Henry- point that I feel like everybody in Hollywood ha- you've run has Henry such Winkler, high respect you know I mean? for him. I mean, mm-hmm. Andy. We're at a party, right? Henry Winkler walks into the room. You gonna tell me you're not? Everybody. You're not gonna be like fucking Henry Winkler? Is it like texting Tim? You fucked up by not coming out tonight, Tim. And <laughs> Tim's like, yeah, I'm at another party. I'll be there in a second. Think Everybody's that, showing up. Who doesn't yeah. want to meet Henry Winkler? If even if you're like the biggest, even if you're Brad Pitt or Leonardo DiCaprio is hanging out, right? 
he's doing whatever he Leonardo DiCaprio does in his free time. I imagine he reads the Bible, but I could be wrong. No, I don't think he does. <laughs> <Got it. laughs> yeah, <laughs> and Henry Winkler walks in. You can tell me that Leonardo DiCaprio, even being like the one of the biggest Hollywood movie stars on the planet. Wouldn't be like, fuck, I got to go say what's up to Henry Winkler. I got to go yeah. play with Henry Winkler. Come on. See, I got to imagine, too, with Henry Winkler, like, he lucked out that he has a catchphrase that I'm sure he hears a bazillion hey. times with, hey. And, like, that's probably, like, the least annoying thing to be yelled at all the time. You know right. what I mean? Like, it could be so much, so much worse. But that's kind of, it's always cool. That, that'll that be cool for the rest of time. Good for you, Henry Winkler. Good, Good for, for you, you the Fonz. The Fonz. Is that, article, is that article done, Tim? I mean, there's way more, but like I was just reading the highlights. The one last thing I want to say is uh, every few years, there was another headline about one of Marine World's elephants dying. In 2004, an elephant named Misha gored a keeper. He survived, but Misha was packed up and sent to a zoo. Uh, the Vallejo City Council began urging Marine World to, quote, hey, you guys can't do this. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, he- but I, 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 I hate the word gored. Like, that is so gored. visual that this oh. elephant gored. Oh, I thought you meant like a gourd, like a a pumpkin. Like a squash? Yeah. How does that make G- any sense? G-O-U-R-D. Like the elephant like use its You're trunk already to like hand them a, a pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, but yeah, then I also thought like, what's the verb form of Al Gore? Like, ah, oh, he got gourd. Mm-hmm. Like that sort of thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Huh. Which could have been really good for his campaign show, if you think about it. Could have played that. Could have played with those words a little bit, you know? By the way, also Marine World is where... Uh, Dr. Disrespect won his two t- when he always says the two time thing. It's like that's one of the things he'd always mention. I've won it in front of the Marine World and uh, in front of the Killer Whale exhibit. That is um, hilarious. That's another fact. Man, that place got legacy. That place legacy, got legacy. man. A lot of controversy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would never stick my hand down a dolphin, much no. less any other animal. Now, here's the big question, though. Andy, you and I are swimming in a tank, hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. One of us, both of us, weren't speedos. We don't know. It doesn't matter. We're not going to worry about that for right now. I swallow a bolt. And I'm thinking, I don't want the Andy. I don't want them to cut over my stomach. I'm right? calling Patrick Ewing. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully he suffocates Nick. <laughs> Nick. <laughs> that, full, that arm is just completely constricting your airways. <laughs> Fuck, I'd be like this. But Andy, I'm staring at you the whole time no matter what. You understand like you, that, right? The you last can't talk. Thing... You just got a fucking arm down your throat and you're like, God damn it, Andy. <laughs> like, I told you uh, not to bring an NBA player. Dolphin had three minutes. Nick has like maybe <laughs> eight seconds. <laughs> I somehow still managed to interrupt you, even though I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one, Nick. That was Thank good, you. yeah. Thank you. yeah. That was Thank a real fucking good, good one. Hey, the um the whole restaurant thing is when does that take effect of like the mass or the vaccine requirement? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, to- we have to start showing our, our stuff tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Vaccine or uh, um um movie theaters too, or just restaurants? everywhere, every indoor thing. Whoa, shut the fuck. So even like a corner store or a CVS? I mean, will they enforce it? I don't know, but yeah. Goddamn corridor guy's going to be on my ass. I swear to God. Oh, you're worried about that guy, huh? I've already had a lot of people be super lax with these Vax cards, by the way. And I know that like people are like faking are this and stuff. That? No, but it's, I, I mean, I don't mind because I personally, you know, I've been vaccinated and I'm like, well, I know that I'm not lying, but I, sh- but a lot of people are like, we need to see your, your Vax card or the QR code. And I'm like, how about this picture, this blurry picture my, I had my wife send me three weeks ago when I got it, when I forgot it. And they were like, <laughs> yeah, that's Good fine enough. too. Good enough. Come on through, sir. Right this Come way. On, sir. Yeah, what would you like to link experience. in the store today? That's people really have been people have been really strict at a couple places. Like there was one pl- time that I, I just didn't have it because I didn't expect that people were going to be enforcing that. And this was a couple weeks ago, and yeah, couldn't get in. I'm like, cool. Hey, you know what? I respect that. Yeah, a lot. I'd be like this. Uh, just text Nick's wife. She'll send you a picture of his. They're not going to know. <laughs> they're not checking your ID. They're not going to fucking know. No, I the I've had two times now. They check my ID to it. Oh really? Yeah, that's good. That's better. Wait, good. so okay, so um. The QR code, what's this all about? Where does that go? Where is that? So, at? You, so there's you, apparently, I don't know if it's all of the people, all of the, 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 the people who did the vaccines, but they register you with the state if you've been vaccinated. You can go and sign up uh, for a QR code, basically, where they, they're like, it'll, it'll give you a QR code that correlates to your vax card. So, we oh. can scan it and it says, yes, this person's been vaccinated, both doses or whatever, or one dose if it's the J&J. 
um, which is cool. That's actually really dope because I take so many pictures of stupid shit that inevitably I have to resend myself the picture <laughs> over and over again. Do you Nick, have that happen, Nick, where you're like, you take the photo of something you know is important, mm-hmm. then you can't find it when you need it, and you time. have that, you know what, I need to go through and delete all the unimportant photos on my phone, and then you never do that, and the process continues, because that's my life. No, no, here's here's the thing, guys, that like, I'm with, with you, and I might sound really stupid, and you guys are like, I fucking knew that, duh. Uh, on iOS, at least, there's uh, favorites. Oh, yeah, you can you can like oh. like pictures and then it just is like there's like a folder on their, their homepage of your photos and they, they have it. So I just like put my Vax card there. So the only favorite I have and I'm like, this is easy as shit. Yeah, no, I, I have that. And uh, I my it, it's I was, you know, generalizing for Nick, but it's the same thing there where I favorite too many things. Because mm-hmm. what I'll do is I take a million photos of something. Then I favorite the ones I want to put up on social. Mm-hmm. I go Smart. through and edit those and then I forget to unfavorite them. And I have 3000 favorites that I yeah. never want to go through. Dude, it's astounding to me because D has like maybe a hundred pictures on her phone. Jesus Christ, are you kidding? No, well, I mean, who crazy. do you think has the most? I mean, Greg probably has the most pictures. I, was, I, I would think it's me, but let's do a check, everybody. Let's Get do a check. It's never me because I have no. How do you tell? How do you attachment tell? Attachment to oh, photos. Oh my God, Jesus Christ! Where are you at, Nick? Ten thousand three hundred and eighty-five photos. What? Four hundred and thirty-six videos. Yeah, I'm at six thousand. What? But that's I, have no I, atta- I have no attachment. Every once in a while, my phone will just like I'll just I'll get a new one or I'll just reset it, and I have like thirty. I don't know. I don't really care. There's no way yeah, to see, like. I'm the opposite. Those- oh my god, Greg is making a face. Yeah. What do you got, Greg? Twenty thousand. Guess me. All right, you, you want to lock I think in twenty? 20. Mm-hmm. All right, Tim. You got to go lower for it to be shocking. I'm gonna guess Greg has three hundred pics. Picture of me with my brother's dogs. You see it. No, it's gonna fill. Uh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, there I'm gonna go. say fifteen thousand. Yeah, yeah fifteen thousand sure. sounds right. I have fifty-seven thousand eight hundred and seven. Jesus yeah. Christ! Yeah. Burn the phone. Start over. I yeah, love it, dude. I I, I, it, I can't believe that everyone's not like me because when I, the phone came, that was just I'm done with digital cameras and iCloud makes it so you're not iCloud. I the iPhone makes it so easy that any photo I've ever taken, I have there. Yeah, I mean, I, since I got the phone. I back up a lot. So it's like once once a year, I I'll I back up to my desktop and I have everything because I, I, I like making sure that I'm like starting from some level of mm-hmm. like being able to find shit when I'm looking for it. I'm able to get such great stuff. You want to see a Ryan Clements photo from 2007? I got you covered. It's there. It's I have 142 photos and I thought that was excessive. <laughs> I, my, my question for me is how many of them are screenshots? Because I feel like I screenshot the living hell out of things to like remind myself to do shit. You can check like... that too, you know, right? My screenshots that I have on here are 5,409. What do you think is my highest? What do you think? I mean, that's pretty oh, easy, I guess. What selfies. do you think? About, what, what do you think? Yeah, selfies. 100% so, selfies, selfies, I have 9,207. Uh, here, here's what I think you have if I had to go in order of magnitude. Selfies, number one. Number huh? two, pictures of steak and broccoli. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. God, <laughs> I like to cook and make some good things. You know what I mean? That's going to be a dunk on Greg fest. All right. <laughs> Number four. Here's a croissant that I'm eating today. Oh, Look right. how I don't do croissant photos that much, sir. Uh, <laughs> steak and broccoli. You're such <laughs> only, a bitch. Only 2,000 screenshots. I'm surprised. 2,000? Uh, yeah. I thought it was going to be more. Like every once in a while, I don't know what photos are being backed up to Google Photos, but every once in a while, my phone will be like, "Hey, it's been three years since this photo at RTX or whatever." It's like, damn, I don't, I don't know what's being backed up or not, but it's always the same ones. That's it's funny you say that, Andy, because uh, recently a screenshot I took uh, was was this, and this is this is Andy Cortez. That's me I, in 2016, in 2015, dude. 2015, 2015, okay. yeah. Wearing my PS2 okay, shirt, and Tim was like, "Let's shirt. use that for PS. I love you." <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> I love that. That's how we just steal it. We just steal those ideas. Jesus Christ, that's way too long ago. God damn, six years, dude. Mm-hmm. Six Nuts. Fucking years. Where does the time go? It's flying, as always. Flying yeah. where, Greg? Forward, Andy. Always forward. But into a word from our sponsor. I have a question from Eric Myers about going into the past that we'll tackle after a word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Babbel. When you're traveling to a destination where you don't know the language, it can be challenging to accomplish even the simplest of tasks. Tell me that isn't true. You know, there's one time I remember I was in Bali and I was very overwhelmed, not understanding what was going on. And uh, that could have 
easily been solved if I had Babbel in my life back then. Thankfully, there's Babbel, the number one selling language learning app. Babbel is a travel essential. Greg Miller's been learning a little French here and there so he can better communicate with one jean Viel saint ange Miller. You know what I'm talking about? Babbel's 15-minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 100 language experts. Pretty cool. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. So that's six months for the price of three. Just go to babbel.com and use promo code morning. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com code morning. Babbel, language for life. Next up, shout out to HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get fresh pre-measured ingredients and mouthwatering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Fall is busy, but HelloFresh recipes save time you'd otherwise spend meal planning, shopping, and shopping so you can get back to what matters. Uh, HelloFresh's family-friendly menu is a big win for back-to-school season with easy, delicious recipes for drama-free dinners. Uh, so many members are kind of funny have been loving HelloFresh, including Kevin Coelho and Paula Coelho. She's a vegetarian. He's not. Guess what? There's options for both. It's great. So much cool stuff. Uh, you can go to HelloFresh.com slash morning14 and use code morning14 for up to 14 free meals, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash morning14 and use code morning14 for up to 14 free meals. Very cool. Go check that out now. One more time. HelloFresh.com slash morning14 14 and use code morning 14 for up to 14 free meals and free shipping. And finally, shout out to me undies. It's fall y'all replace those hydration stations with pumpkin spice lattes and go out of your way to step on crunchy leaves because the coziest time of the year has arrived. I love me undies. I'm obviously wearing a me undies shirt right now. Me undies lounge pants, me undies undies and me undies socks. Cause that's the type of life that I live. I just love their soft micromodal fabric and I want it all over my body. Me undies. Can you make some bobber jackets? Please. I want them very, very bad. Imagine the softest thing you've ever felt. Now imagine that's the thing on your butt. That is MeUndies. They're designed by the country's top softness scientists to be the softest thing you've ever worn, period. It's so true. I can attest. To get 50% off your first order, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash morning. That's MeUndies.com slash morning to get 15% off and free shipping for first-time purchasers. And if you're not satisfied with any product for any reason, they'll refund or exchange it. No caveats, no questions. MeUndies.com com slash morning one more time meundies.com slash morning all right eric myers writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny just like you can to go get the show ad free to get your questions on the air and do all that different stuff and nick clear your mechanism we're starting with you all right eric myers says you awaken in a you awaken in a daze dressed in robes you emerge from a room to find you have been transported back in time and you are somehow one of jesus's apostles with all the information you currently have what do you tell jesus to make him think that you're by far the coolest apostle as a note you can't tell him about judas directly but you can't hint at it i mean first off i'm straight up gonna be like yo this dude like real talk i'm gonna i'm gonna tell him tim gettys it yo real talk this judas guy sucks yeah and he's gonna totally betray you and Jesus is going to be like, listen, Nick, I'm, I'm all about forgiveness. You know, I'm all about that low carb life. I'm all about I'm all about turning that water into that wine, have one or two glasses at the end of the night, you know, keeps you sharp, kind of get you get you sleeping. So I trust Judas. I'm going to say, which one of us, Big J, Big JC? Hell. Oh, and I'm still doing a Tim impression. <laughs> No, no, no. I've, I've moved off to okay. so, the what, first part Jesus of it. Jesus low carb? He, made, they ate he was, bread. He was they very skinny. Bread. Yeah, he turned. They were skinny. They walked all the time. A lot of talk about fish. Very, very paleo. Sure. A lot of talk about fish. Uh, he walked on water. And where did fish right, come You're from? just saying water. things about Jesus that I don't know there, if they make him there was a, At one he point, just, he, was burning, he was burning some bush, maybe smoking that thing. We don't know. We don't, don't know what's going on. I say burning bush. I don't like that. It's Catholic. It's very it's very Catholic, very Christian. And I'd be like this. Listen, JC. My my big old friend, my, you know, my big old friend, <laughs> my big old friend, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus and Nick are around the fire. Friend. I imagine JC tiny Rose, Nick, like listen, big old JC, hanging big out, big hanging out with my, hanging out with my boy JC. Great abs, great abs, JC. Yeah. Very paleo yeah. life. I have. Which one of us has the best beard? And JC, of course, great. Uh, JC known for a lot of things, right? The, yeah. If you're going by the, I'm, by the way, we're strictly going by. I'm going by the Roman Catholic. 
like representation of Jesus Christ. Isn't that like which looks, Michelangelo's lover or whatever? Yeah, I'm just gonna go with Jared Leto with a beard. That's what sure, it looks that's, like. Yes, accurate, nailed it. That is what when I grew up, I was like, Jesus Christ looks a lot like Jared Leto. Or if Brad Pitt were to grow a beard out and he had the little V thing, because he was always sure. you know, kind of jacked out, right? Jesus was jacked as shit. Jesus was fucking jacked, right? Like I'm not like jacked like like we're doing something like he's, you know, getting those like steroids from Jerusalem. But like no, no, Jesus was a lean no, jack. He was Again, like a it's all the fish, jack. it's all the walking, it's all the lifting of the lambs. We've all seen exactly, it. exactly. It's the silencing of the lambs. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? He's you just see bench the, pressing these the lambs. Painting. He's got this lamb. That's upper body strength. You need. He's right lifting there. them. He's also throwing them over the the the, the shoulders like yep. a Roman squat. You know where they have he's to do like the rocky the thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna level with him. Like, listen, yeah. JC, I'll I'll blow smoke up your ass sometimes, right? Like yeah. this whole. Trying to get followers and shit like that. I get it. You're a fucking you're trying to get that clout. You're trying to get that clout, right? You're trying to get you're trying to get those sponsorships. You're all you're out there talking about wine, trying to get those like, you know, the Martin Scorsese want or like Francis Ford Coppola wine mm-hmm. sponsorship. I totally get that dog. Alec like Baldwin to, with tequila. You know, exactly. Vodka right? or something. I forget what it is. Not trying to get in your way, a big cat, but I just need you to know that one of the one of us, and there's 13 of us now, apparently, was going to fuck you over. And it's for sure Judas. And if you can't trust this beard, what can you trust? Didn't, I mean, like, here's my thing. Probably like, you're going to say all this. This is a big old JC. My big old friend. Right? He's going to sit there and he's going <laughs> to say, I know this. Like, I knew Judas. He knew Judas was going to betray him, right? Remember? He says at, at the certain... table, one of you is going to betray me. And all yeah, the apostles I... are like, no, Jesus, no way. In the comics, he didn't Again, know. Who do you oh, think man. told him that, right? <laughs> At this point, oh my who do you God. think told him that Judas was going to betray him? Oh, my God. You just took it full circle. You've gone right? back in time to make the history I'm, I'm trying to throw in your face. I'm loopering it. I'm looper. I am oh, me. Yeah. I am me. You're me. I'm you. I am all. me. In the future, <laughs> let's live with that. The iconic time loop thing. I am me. What? <laughs> <laughs> who are you? <laughs> who are you? <laughs> but also, <laughs> here, here's my big question, Greg. Here's my big yeah, question. I'm listening. Right? Because we all know the picture of the, the Last Supper, right? It's one yeah. of the most iconic pictures ever put on Instagram, right? You've got, mm-hmm. you got JC, you got all the, the apostles there. There's David, Wolf Matthew, Ridge. George, Phil. Lance Bass. Uh, yeah, Lance Bass was there too. I think maybe JT was there as well. Doesn't Kramer. Matter. How do you get, like, here's the thing. Nobody remembers who's on the side of the picture, right? Doesn't matter. I mean, with how all due respect, get... I don't remember anybody but Jesus in the center. And I know they're all doing funny things with their heads and their turn. Right. They're doing this. There's right. one they're guy all doing like, funny yeah. things. <laughs> all right, Andy, guys. One guy jacking on. off. We're gonna take three. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna take three pictures. Let's do one normal one. Let's do one wacky one. <laughs> yeah. Now everyone's. Now everyone say uh, crucifix. <laughs> um. How do you get close? How do you get to? I want to be like right next to JC. Right. Can you throw it up there? Or you want me to send you? Send oh, no, here? I got I, I got it. I got it. Uh, here, this one right here. Because I, I got to see it. I got yeah, to see that's, it. Right no, that's, there we that's, go. There we that's go. A, that's, yeah, that one's easy because you look and I, I know these characters. I got Bugs right. Bunny. I don't know that bear. Martian Manhunter. Oh, it's just got Raffy, it. This isn't. A dog. Yeah, this is the actual picture of the last one. The Grinch is there. Why is the Grinch here? This is some weird multi-universe canon moment. that I well, That's Yogi Bear, right? Isn't that Yogi Bear of those? Yogi and the Grinch do not belong in this picture. Who's Top the bear left. on the left? Oh, that ain't Yogi over there. That's just some bear. Who the fuck is that bear? It definitely isn't Yogi. It's somebody who wearing- stayed at, at the Yogi Bear campgrounds in Amboy, Illinois, dozens of times. That is not Yogi Bear. I'll hey, let you know. And it's not Boo Boo either. It could, and I know, I know Cindy, Yogi's girlfriend, very well too. That's not God her. Can I see the regular painting of Last Supper? Yeah, I'm gonna pull it up. You're doing great. I here. thought I'd, you know, be fun and pull up a fun. You were, leg, it, right? and it was a funny bit, except right. for the fact when Tim's like, "That's Yogi Bear," and this clearly we're gonna talk about it for bear. years. Who's this like, fucking bear? I don't know who that is, but <laughs> <laughs> I want you to know how hard I looked to the left <laughs> of this <laughs> painting when I went up. Like, who is this bear? Oh, this is the real painting. And here's the thing about it: you look at this painting, right? And you got to just say, like, what a b- bunch of generic looking fucks, you know? Don't get me wrong, Jesus, he's got to stop. We know who he is again. Like, uh, he's got a whole out. thing. We see him. He's, well, he's my big Jesus. old friend. There's look Mary. at the rest of them. Who's the who's I, the who's the gray beard all the way to, or not all the way to the left, but one in from the left? Huh? I know what you're Socrates? saying, Greg. What's he doing? I I feel like we need somebody with a hat, maybe some arm accessories on another person. I need one person like double, like uh, you know, two guns, dual wielding two pistols sure. or something yeah. like that. Give yourself some character. Like, why yeah. doesn't one of them have a bit? Like, he's always sucking a lollipop. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, oh, Razor Ramon toothpick. You know? Yeah, Razor Ramon would be great in Last Supper. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, please be excited. Please edit Razor Ramon into the Last Supper for us. Then. And I don't want it half assed one. I want it weathered. I want it to look the same. All right? I, want <laughs> I want it weathered. You know what I mean? Like, I, any moron can go in to, yeah. you know, get a BMP, a Razor Ramon, cut him out. <laughs> <BMP>. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> you're talking about how generic they all look and stuff like that. And, and, and uh, pardon me because I'm not as familiar with. Uh, um, Christianity and Catholicism, even though I was, I, I did go to church a lot as a, a little kid. Um, like a lot of the, the Bible is, I, I feel like is whitewashed. Uh, and like a lot of the way that oh, people yeah. modernize no, it. No so way like that there. would be like, that would call also cross over into this, this painting, right? Like they all look generic because this was like, you know, just a bunch of generic white guys. Like fucking yeah, it's just, it's just shit. the clothing. The clothing is very generic. Mm. Mm. I mean, yeah. I don't, back then though, like this dude's fit fucking hot he got the drip yeah he's got the fucking drip right it's there. all just this similar guy with palettes, the green and you know? gold right here that's fucking no, drippy right there green and gold homie's the bomb yeah that guy's the bomb right there green and gold homie now barrett i just sent you another image i need you to pull up it's another last supper one uh i will accept when please be excited goes in and does what we're asking him of course putting razor ramon into the last supper if he wants to put some uh, razor ramon into this wwe last supper i found off of reddit that would also work for me of course, Vince McMahon in the center there as Jesus himself. Oh, wow. Hollywood Hulk Hogan all the way. Is he Judas? <laughs> is Hollywood Holy Hulk Hogan all Judas, Judas, right? This is a terrible drawing. <laughs> hey, Andy, no one? Come on now. Don't insult the artist. They tried. Sure. You know what I mean? Look at Vince McMahon's little legs. He Hulk looks like the, the dummy from uh, Goosebumps. Oh, yeah. Hulk if Hulk I can name, If I can name 90% of the people in this picture, Greg, what would yeah. you give me? There's I'm no over. way. No yeah, way. I, I'm not worried about that because that's like what I, I, there's 12 apostles, right? Plus Jesus, that's 13, mm-hmm. 90%. And once so you got to roughly get like 11, 10, 11, 10. 10. Okay. So if you can name 10, mm-hmm. I don't think it's that hard, but go ahead and I, hit me. Start off. All right. Start from the left. Hulk Hogan or Hollywood Hogan. Damn. Then you got Mankind, The huh? Undertaker, The Rock. Huh? Is that He's Shawn right? Michaels? Don't, and nobody answered that. Uh, I mean, I, well, you I'll said Shawn Michaels. Michaels. That, that's Michael. a miss. That is a miss. You I can't one. see who's behind him because it's too blurry. But that's I'll a hilarious God. joke. Oh that's my a hilarious God. joke. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! shit. <laughs> I'm gonna guess it's John Cena based on the thing he's wearing. That's, yeah. Right. Perfect. Brett the Hitman Perfect. Heart, Stone Cold Steve Austin. No idea who that guy is in the Joker costume. Ric Flair. That's Shawn Michaels. And uh-huh. that is the other heart. Owen Hart. That's a miss as well. So you missed three there. Thus negating wow. your 90%. Which ones did he get wrong? Because the far he left got, is Kevin Nash, he, right? No. He got Chris Jericho wrong in between Rock and John Cena. Ah, it's Chris Jericho. He got the Macho Man Randy Savage wrong uh, back happened? there. <laughs> oh, that didn't look like Chris Jericho. <laughs> That's not right, man. Oh, Randy Savage is the guy. Okay, the guy with the... Macho Man Randy Savage is behind yeah. Stone Cold Steve Austin. And then he got Triple H wrong. Uh, now, I will let you know, with all due respect to the artist, that is a terrible Triple H. I Which saw it and immediately went, oh, that's Mike Awesome. And then I was like, wait, no, they, why would Mike Awesome be at the WWE? Oh, that's Triple H. You can see the little, the little cross thing down on his, his uh, dick. That's like, oh, that's, that's I see. Him. That's a thing. terrible Triple H. He looks like a You only Joker. know it's Shawn Michaels because he's next to Triple H. Well, no, Otherwise. I mean, like, I, well, I mean, it's, if somebody's like, "Hey, who are gonna, who's going to be the WWE, you know, uh, superstars yeah. last supper?" You, you're going to be looking for him. You're going you're to know it. So, who's like far Martin left? Genetic. Way far left. Triple Way H. far left is Triple H. There's no shot. I hey again. Look at his he, art. He's trying. He's got the he's got the arm tapes up. Yeah. What? You see it. You see what he's trying for there. It's awful. Yeah, it look. It's it Kevin Nash. Awful. Put him in the Kevin Nash like clothing or whatever. He yeah. has a little mullet rock in or whatever. That was, that's a that's a bad job. Who was right next to Jesus on the right side that was near John Cena being covered up? Because I thought that was a, uh, I thought that was Triple H. Is that one? No, that's, that's John Jericho. Cena. John Cena and Jericho. That's Jericho. With the jacket. Oh, damn it. What a never they, all, they all look in because it's blurry on my thing. I don't know if you can actually sharpen this a little bit when you're on the, for the stream you're putting out to us. <laughs> they all look a little like Joe Dirt. Hmm. They all look a little bit like Joker. I guess I could see that. He looks no, like Joe, Joe Dirt. Dirt. Shawn Michaels Joe looks like Joe Dirt. Dirt. <laughs> Triple H looks a little like Joe Dirt. Because they all look like they've got mullets. <laughs> yeah. David David right. Spade yeah, is I hosting Bachelor in Paradise right now. And it's just the fucking best. I didn't realize how much I love David Spade. He's wow. a good dude. You good know, dude. David Spade through years has had some ups and some downs. He's had some misses. 
and some some triumphs. And I was watching, and I, this is not going to come as any surprise to you guys that I love <laughs> this movie. Okay, and it's on way too often, and it has a sequel, and I've watched the sequel a lot too. I love the movie Grown Ups. I love it. I think it's just a delightful, stupid movie. No impact. You don't have to pay attention to it. It has no plot whatsoever. It's very similar to an old, like the Great Outdoors movies, like that. Where you're like, this oh, is just, a, we're just out here. We're just out here in the Remember outdoors. Remember the Great Outdoors? Just, what a flick! Yeah, yeah, not much plot, by the way, in the Great Outdoors. It mostly just moves from scene to scene as a as a vehicle for John Candy and Dan Aykroyd to to showcase sure. their talents. And I'm not mad at it. Had a great it taught me about raccoons for the first time in my life. Oh, oh, yeah. Have you ever thing. seen the the Great Outdoors, Tim? No, I have not. Because it's just I know like I know we're getting ready for Ghostbusters in review to record them, and I know you talk about like those kind of comedies being something of the past. Like The Great Outdoors is a comedy of the past, right? I guess it's, there's probably more physicality, like the bear jumping on John Candy and shit. Oh, you want a big sandwich? I'll be quiet. I have no re- frame of reference to any of that. I don't yeah, know. I'm I'm like looking at images of this, and I'm like, this doesn't seem real. I keep thinking Harry and the Hendersons. Yeah, me too. You play. Harris in the Hendersons or Harry? Harry. 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 Harris. Harris. Harris is the, that's the official when you go to Britain, England. <laughs> Harris. Harris. That's what Henderson. they call it over there. That's what they call it. You know how like it was like Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. And like what the fuck's a sorcerer? We call them philosophers. And you're like that's the weirdest shit ever. What is fucking Aristotle gonna come take down Voldemort? You weirdos. Idiots. Idiots, dude. Bunch of idiots. I know. Right, I'm gonna send you a, a picture. I was looking up. Uh, okay. Nothing this movie. can beat this though that I also found. Oh wow. No. God. <laughs> Video game last up right here. Now, I think I can aim on <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Smash Brothers. Thanks to Smash. I mean, it is to Smash Brothers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, but I was looking up the Great Outdoors uh, movie poster, which I'm also going to send you because it's really interesting. Can you bring up the Great Outdoors one first, Barrett? That I said, because, yeah, there's just this bear chilling in the background. And because of the perspective, the it makes the, both the raccoon look huge and the bear look small <laughs> simultaneously. And, uh, I enjoy that. Quite Are a you bit. talking this about no holiday? The... This is war. Sure, sure. It's perspective, yeah, you the, know. The, the, no, the bear looks weirdly small. It's really weird. Uh, the raccoon looks weirdly big. <laughs> Look at well, it. It's perspective. No, dude, it, d- Tim. Do you know how big raccoons can get? It's yeah, fucking terrifying. Are... They get as big as a small bear. We 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 get some. We have a big mama raccoon who's uh, living in our backyard somewhere. He comes out every night, and it's not fun, Tim. Let me tell you, she's not huge. Fun. Now, yeah, of do you course. ever see this thing? We yeah, she always comes up trying to sell stuff. <laughs> like, uh, you guys want some some, some Mary Kay? What is Avon this? calling? Avon calling. That's what it is. <laughs> uh, but I uh, when I clicked on this movie poster, it, it was like people that wanted this also wanted Uncle Buck, which I haven't thought about Uncle Buck in a long time. But uh, can you bring that picture up? Wh- what the hell's up with the titling of this? Uncle Buck. <laughs> Uncle Buck. <laughs> Why? Well, it was on the. If you noticed, it was on the other one as well. It, this is, you know, the way to get around language laws in Canada. Where Are you it has to, Yeah. It, oh, like if you go through most of the stuff in your house, and you'll find that the other language on it is uh, French, because then they can make sure that they can sell it in Quebec, and they can also uh, abide by Quebec law of having both uh, languages represented. That was I bought a new uh, like wasp uh, killer trap or whatever, and I was reading the bu- the box and turned it around, and it's all in French. And there's a bunch of stuff like that. Oh, I don't like that because you're ordering <laughs> stuff from Canada. Yeah, I don't think I don't. I, I mean, I have. I'm just looking around at the stuff in my house right now. I think not a big fan of that. I have, have a hundred Blu-rays next to me, and I don't think a single yeah. one. Well, no, no, no. Well, hold on, hold on. Puppy breaks like. That's, I'm not saying necessarily it's going to be sold here in America. I'm just saying like that would be why that one is. That Usually, poster. and especially for the ones that are like that of like, hey, here's like, you know, the bargain one you're oh, going to yeah. find at $6.99 at the gas station. Like got that's it, the one it. that's going to be like the cheapest. They put it everywhere it can go. Here's in that poster. If, if that particular DVD is sold in Canada, it's going to have both of those languages on it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. That, that that checks out because that's like a that's a big export from America, right? The, our movies. So Uncle you wouldn't Buck see that. In America. You wouldn't see that in the United States. You would just see it called Uncle Buck. But if you were in a different country it's always fun that's one of my like the coolest things to do when you see people posting like their version of the iron man poster from like japan or some shit like that and this is iron man but it's got the japanese lettering underneath it dope dope cool as speaking I of know. movies did y'all happen to watch the uh, any of y'all happen to watch malice of the palace on netflix so good what is it really good it's malice like 30 for 30 but it's uh netflix's it's a netflix uh thing that they're starting for sports docs oh. and the first one they did <laughs> was the big fight uh, between the Pacers and the Pistons back cool. 
in the late 90s, early 2000s, and it's kind of what changed the NBA and what... Um, when that happened, there were a lot of sort of reports all over the league about thugs and these players are thugs and this and that. And there was a kind of a big change after that to make the league more appealing to white families where it, it was, was like the end of the attitude era, right? Of like the NBA and shit, that big fight. Uh, well, I think attitude era, I think wrestling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like um, we're in the next, like the week after institutes the dress code and all that Yeah, stuff. yeah. Like, David Stern is like, like everybody has to dress in suits now and this and that. And they're trying to make the league like more appealing. And they're, Allen Iverson is on the cover of the, one of the magazines and they they Photoshop out his tattoos to make him more appealing and stuff like that. But the mouse of the palace thing is really interesting because this whole time it's just malice. sort of malice. Yeah, I thought you said for when, I thought you said mouse in the palace. Yeah, I, I, thought I thought it was thought like a hard hitting in the house documentary. Oh. <laughs> I was like, whoa, Netflix is hard on on, uh, on Disney Plus. Fucking yeah, dumb. malice of the palace. Very very good. Highly recommended. Mm-hmm. It's only an hour long. I'll check and it out. Uh, it's it's really cool because this whole time it's been painted as, you know, the somebody got thrown a soda at them and it was Ron Artest. And then he went up into the crowd and started fighting these fans. And then it just became an all out brawl. And everybody's like scared for their safety. And then one guy comes down from this. I remember what, like watching this shit and watching the highlights and seeing a random dude from the crowd get out on the floor and like try to square up with Ron Artest and this guy's like two feet shorter than him and he gets punched by Ron Artest. It's just like and he's getting interviewed as well. Yeah, like he's he's fuck? getting if you never watched it, do you are you do you remember this fight, Nick? Does this sound no, familiar to you? No, I mean no, not at all. Okay. Because I remember it's something, the time, it's something Andy's the talked M- about it a couple times, maybe. The maybe. NBA has not really wanted to talk about it a whole lot because uh, it was just like a bad point for the league. So um, where players are fighting fans in the stands because there was there was a, a bit of a fight between these two teams. They had a rivalry and Ron Artest, who's a known hothead, uh, but also deals with a lot of uh, psychological issues. And he has a therapist with him uh, a lot of the time. And he lays down on the he lays down on the scores table and tries to go through his counting and breathing exercises to calm down after he's almost gets into a little bit of a scuffle with another player. And then a fan 15 rows up, I don't know what, 10 rows up, just gently tosses yeah. oh, a just, oh, cup yeah. oh, at him. Shit. And he goes after the wrong guy. He runs by the guy, guy in the, the blue, blue suit. Is the guy who threw it. Yeah, the blue and the white hat is the one who threw the cup at him. Uh, and Steven Jackson, who's like, hey, that's my family. I'm coming after you too. And then it just security was not really there. And people are on the on the floor like we need to get out of here. It's only 12 of us players and all these people are trying to fight with us. And it's it is absolutely wild. Like and it, it, yeah, it, it empties out onto the court like people coming out and fighting them or whatever. And this is it all hell breaks. This Nick, you oh, should watch this. Great. I want to watch this because the, the last documentary I watched was um, the one about Jackie Collins. Also a very good documentary called Lady Jackie Boss. Collins is. Oh, the writer, the writer. So yeah. it's she it. was very prolific back in the day. Um writing sort of like romance novels, but from the women's perspective and about like, it's very, very much about empowering women and basically like being sex positive for women and things like that. But she was doing it in the 80s, which took a lot of flack from pretty much everyone being like, this is trash, this is shit. But she reinvented herself as like this 80s icon to like, as like armor, they were like, she put up armor for herself. And that armor, Andy was like, fucking badass big 80s hair and shoulder pads and like a man she used to wear ties like that was her signature look like that like a loose tie sort of look but what's crazy is i never put two and two together with her her sister's joan collins who was a huge celebrity back in the day a big big a huge like uh actor back in the day and then was on Dy- uh, dynasty i want to say and so it's just like it's kind of about them and their relationship and like her how she was like a backseat for her sister for a really long time then started writing books and then the books took off and then she became this icon pretty cool it's all 80s and shit too, which I like. Hmm. Hell yeah. Okay. Where's that one? That's on Netflix. Yeah. Okay. So I'll I'll watch your sports documentary and if you watch my trashy romance novel documentary. I when you said Jackie, I thought you meant I thought you were gonna say Jackie McMullen. You remember her, Greg? Who's Jackie, Jackie McMullen? Jackie McMullen. You'll if you look her up, you'll be like, oh her, because she was always on PTI and around the horn back in the day and these older ESPN shows. She's a sports writer. Uh, oh yeah, okay. sort of. Per- and she she finally retired. She announced her retirement. She's been around yeah. forever, 
And so I thought maybe you would have known her because, you know, you're, you're a journalist, Greg. You're a writer. Well, I remember more for PTI, I think. I rem- oh, okay, got it. Because I remember <laughs> I, I, wanted, I really wanted to call out that beautiful post you put up, by the way, on Instagram of you and Jen. And just reading that whole sort of paragraph you wrote, I was like, God, this guy's a writer. This motherfucker can write. This motherfucker dude, can you. write. I still got it. I can, I can dust it off. This when motherfucker I do. can write right <laughs> here. <laughs> Strike this motherfucker out. Major <laughs> League. Remember everybody? Fucker out. Oh, <laughs> nice. Major League, dude. You know Holy what I was shit. watching? On top yeah. of the mouse and house, I watched that or whatever. You know what I watched though, Nick? And I think you might enjoy it. The Abyss. Oh. I've never yes. seen The Abyss all the way through. Oh my period. god! Movie. I've, I've popped in, I popped out as a kid or whatever, and I never did it. Now, Wait, granted, which... uh, the one thing is uh, with Jen being pregnant, I can only get usually half a movie out of her, so I still have to finish The Abyss. But right. I, I didn't, I did not remember that Michael Bean was in it. Oh, yeah. I did not remember any of the stuff. So he, he just, you know, he just uh, lost his mind or whatever kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, he's awesome and, in it. He's great. Yeah, I mean, like the whole Michael, cast is great. No, Michael Bean was like Michael. It's funny because Michael Bean was like was supposed to be like James Cameron's guy. Yeah. And he had some, if memory serves correctly, abuse, right? he had some substance abuse problems. And so that sort of like outed him, or not outed him, but like kind of ruined his, not ruined his career, but stopped his career for a very, very long time. So to see him come back sort of in the abyss or be in that movie as sort of the bad guy was so cool. Plus he was always the protagonist. He was like, he was Hicks from Alien yep. and he was, you know, Kyle Reese from Terminator. So seeing him like losing it and getting the bends and doing all that shit, like doing the, like cutting his arm underneath the table and shit like yeah, that. yeah. yeah. So cool. Which ending did you did you watch? Uh, again, I'm only halfway through. Gen- oh, you still oh, Gen- have not. Yeah, there was multiple either. endings. What the hell? They refilmed. If memory serves correctly, they refilmed the ending from. I think it was supposed to like a whole t- a tidal wave was supposed to like destroy a city, and then I think they had it. They were like, "Well, it's too it's too much." So I think there's an alternate ending where a city gets destroyed, but in this one, it's like the tidal wave just stops. Like the the because the water the aliens can like control water, so they just stop it. As Ed Harris having that amazing moment where he's like trying to convince them, to like, please don't destroy all of humanity. Dude, the CG cool. was so cool. That was the CG that was like that shit was like groundbreaking. Man. I think they won a lot of Academy Awards for that. For that yeah, that was like the through. Terminator CG. Sort but of man, shit. that fucking movie as my one of my favorite scenes of any f- film that's ever been made. It's the scene where Ed Harris is trying to resuscitate Mary Elizabeth Master. Well, first off, before we get to that, and I've talked about this in the podcast, I'll give a fuck, Tim. I'm going to tell you one more time because it's amazing. They get in a mini sub race with Michael Bean because he's, he's trying to launch a nuclear weapon to kill these aliens they discovered. And shit happens. Either way, it ends up with <laughs> shit happens. Well, because I want him to watch this now because he's never seen it, right? I've never you seen it. Well, yeah. Well, so you should watch it. This is kind of a this is Michael Bean in review, coward. Michael fucking that amazing. Um, there's a scene where he has to swim Mary Elizabeth Master Antonio, who is his ex-wife, who has gotten put on this station with him by some horrible stroke of luck for both of them. He has to swim her like half a mile, and he's the only one that has like an air tank. And she's like, in order to save us, like we're stuck out here. In order to save us, you're the you're the strongest swimmer. You got to put the thing on. And they he sits there and watches as as the water's filling up, and she's like looking at him, and then she like drowns, and he takes her. The next cut, he just is like screaming in his fucking helmet. And the next cut, you hear the scream echoed as there's this tiny little speck in this black void that's the ocean as he's swimming his fucking ass off, like dragging his, the love of his life behind him. Then he pulls her up into the water, right? And everyone's freaking the fuck out because they're like, Jesus, they don't want to let all love her. I'm and freaking the fuck out right he's, now. He's, he's just yeah, starts resuscitating her, right? And after like a minute of like, like, like just trying to get her back up, one of the guys, one of the other actors, like, puts their hand on her shoulder, and they're like, it's, he's, she's dead. She's done. And he goes for a second, and then he goes, no. And he fucking screams. And he starts screaming at her. He's like, you've never fucking given up on anything in your fucking life. Don't you give up on me right now. And then he starts yeah. beating her fucking chest. And I swear, and, every, and it's just shots of everyone crying. Like, everyone's just losing it. And then he just slams her chest, and water comes out. She goes, oh, fucking comes back. And I am in tears when this happens every single fucking time. That is awesome. Oh, I've got, got so cool. Is the score backing good. it up? What's that? Is there like there, a score to back it up? Like No score. It is oh, dead whoa. fucking silent. That's and, so and cool. Harris, Ed Harris is screaming at her so hard to wake up that his voice goes out. He's like, wake up. And it's just, and he's fucking crying. It is the best performance he has ever turned in. 
ever. It's amazing. That's saying something because Zed Harris is the man. Oh god, it is. It's one of my. It's uh, the Abyss is a fucking slap, dude. That's like prime James Cameron back in the day. Sorry, I just ruined that amazing scene for everyone. But you should go back and watch it because it's really I, powerful. I actually saw some art. Speaking of crying and James Cameron, I saw that the Colonel guy from Avatar twelve or whatever movies coming out was like. I read the script to Avatar 14 and I cried. That's what he said. <laughs> they always say that shit though. But you the but, old man, but the old man from Don't Breathe. Yeah, yeah. that guy. Oh, yeah, that is that guy. Uh, so like yeah, someone blank. always cries reading a script. People always do a standing ovation for a screen. Oh, and Barrett always gets mad about shit too. Jesus. Yeah. Just Looper let us is be a better excited about than, this movie. It's gonna know, suck, arrival, Barrett. You know. It's gonna suck. We know it. I wanna be excited for it. I wanna be excited. I wanna, I wanna believe. believe. <laughs> Guys, Boy, I have I'll a question pitch, for you. I have a pitch question. Pitch poke, you owe me a coat. And Barrett Courtney um, can kind of play that I'm coming off the, co- the question bench. What do you got? So, you know, I'm, I'm perusing Twitter, just uh, keeping up with what's going on on social. Someone tagged. Somebody's got to keep funny. an eye on them. Yeah. Uh, someone tagged the kind of funny uh, account uh, to a, a tweet from G4 TV saying, this is a kind of funny vids ass poll if you've ever seen one. Shout out to Trey Zink. And I wanted to pose this question to y'all because this is a very interesting question from G4 TV. And you'll be able to see my uh, my vote here. Would you rather give up video games or all sauces for the rest of your life? I'm oh, talking shit. all sauces. So dry pasta, dry wings, no ketchup, etc. I would immediately drop video games. Fuck video games. I'm going sauces for the rest of my life. I got movies. I got music. I got books. I can't give up sauce, man. I could watch Let's Plays of video games. Yeah, I'm with that. I need my sauce. You're crazy people now. I would drop sauces. Wait, okay, but like... Dude, you're so going to pizza sauce, wings? pizza without sauce? Yeah, dude, pizza without sauce. No, bro. I know what you're saying. I am aware of what I'm doing. It's yes, a, it's a horrible that. Sophie's choice. Yeah, what do you want me to do? Video games mean that much to me. I'm sorry. You guys are fake I mean, gamer boys. Tomato right? sauce is great for man. your colon. Great for your colon. Tomato There's a lot sauce. of things that are good for my colon. You know what I mean? Thumbs. And I don't do those already. <laughs> Why would I suddenly care about this? Thumbs, says Nick. <laughs> <laughs> the big thing too is you're all underestimating like where we are with dry rubs and things like that right so there you go because you can get a buffalo dry rub i can say goodbye to buffalo sauce and just have buffalo dry rub but i mean greg, look greg i'm not honestly pizza. i'm not feeling too crazy but yeah cheesy gar- cheesy garlic bread big deal like i'm oh, gonna miss you- it i'm not i'm not doing this and being like woo swish uh, my life's gonna be great yeah i'm gonna miss sauce but i'm gonna be able to get by without it because here's the thing, like, Greg, I, I'm kind of with you because whenever I get nuggets, I go sand sauce because I'm lazy and I'm worried about knocking over the thing of sauce here on my keyboard or something. So that's like the only reason I don't open it up. Also, Andy, uh, you are so Andy. Like, that is the most Andy thing you could have possibly said. Did I tell you about how I chew gum? No. Oh, yeah, this shit's like a- fucking disgusting, dude. It's, I don't think it's weird. No, right? dude, I it's you weird. Need to chill no, out. Like, come on, Andy. The the fact that you had to ask the question, did I tell you about how I chew gum? Yes, it's going to be fucking weird, Andy. Please tell me. Okay, so we're, I was watching uh, Barrett and Mike do the Metal Gear Solid 2 playthrough, and I had gone to the store to pick up a couple of Coke Zeros because I had some Panda Express on the way, and I love buying, as you can see here, the remnants of uh, Hubba Bubba. For sure you do, yeah. Hubba Bubba. Um... And the way I the way I chew gum is like I I'll go through this five pack, give me 15, 20 minutes. I'll just like I'll chew it. What what I do is I grab I grab the big block and I bite it in half and I chew that for a bit until the elasticity and flavor kind of goes away enough. There's still plenty of flavor there, don't get me wrong, but I'm craving the next piece of flavor. So I'll do the next one. And once that Wait, one's how done, long are these min, mini chews going? You said you go through the pack in five minutes. No, I go through the whole pack in about 15, 20 minutes. 15, 20. All right. So how yeah. long? Yeah. So what I do is like I'll, for example, like here's a block. Uh-huh. I'll buy half of it. Mm-hmm. And I'll chew it for a bit. And when I'm done, I'll put it back on the wrapper. Yeah. Okay. And I'll move on to the next but how- piece. But every once in a while, I'll go back to an old piece that's still there. But again, this is happening in a 20 minute time frame. I'm not going back to an old piece of chewed bubble gum that's been there for a day or hours. It's like, oh, I'm, it's, let me just go back to that old piece. Again, Andy, like I said on the stream, buy some fucking adult gum that lasts you more than five minutes. 
Like I've got like three packs of that's extra it, that's, spearmint. That's how long that piece of that, Barrett, that half lasted. Barrett, this is not a flavor lasting thing. This is not a uh, dude. I have all. I have orbit. I have all sorts of bubble gum. Uh, I, I want to start a gum blog. Okay. <laughs> sure. Let me be the arbiter of what's yeah. You're going to be the gum, gum connoisseur. Of kind of funny. Let me be what's the your, arbiter what's your of this. Gum blog being called. Um, this is not a flavor thing. This is just a a feeling and a texture thing, and I move on to the next one. Not because the other one ran out of flavor, because I just want the next piece, right? And so I just do it, and then what happens is there will, uh, like, just like like here, there'll, there'll be some pieces kind of just sitting here. And in about a 30-minute time frame, I might go back to one and put it back in my mouth. Has it been anywhere else? Is it going anywhere else? No. Is it at the bottom of my shoe or underneath my table? No, it's sitting in front of me, that I, and I'm seeing it. I'm not taking it to the restroom. I'm not doing... A, it's whatever. Like, I don't, I'll just put it back in my mouth and chew it for a bit more. If there's a bit more flavor, I can get a bit more out of it. Squeeze the juice for what it's worth, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Squeeze the juice for what it's worth. And I, and I do that. Like, you know, I don't, and everybody's like, that's disgusting. It's like, no, 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 guys, I'm not doing this over a day or something. It's just in a little 30 minute time frame. Yeah. I, 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 I don't think it's disgusting. I don't, I don't think it's even like nasty. It's like, whatever. I just think it's weird. Like, I, I don't think it's sure. worth the no, I think it's gross. endeavor. I just love the chew. I just love the chew. Yeah. You know? The thrill of the chew. Just love uh, the, the thrill of the chew. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's just so good, man. It's got such a, it's such a, it's got a good, a good feeling to it. Cause I've also bought bubble. No, it's, Bubblish. it's definitely not Hubba Bubba. It's not bubble It's double another bubble? one of the Bubba. Bubba double Gump. Bubble? Uh, double, maybe, maybe double bubble. But the, uh, the text is just not there for me. Something about mm. Hubba Bubba, they've got a good texture. Hubba Bubba Max, by the way. Which is the upgrade from last year? What do they you max get LTE out? on this bottle? Yeah. <laughs> what do they max out? What is, what's different? The texture, <laughs> flavor, say, Greg. Chew. Who could say? It's not saying on the wrapper. <sighs> There's a lot to process off that. There's a lot to process off of that. Um. Yeah, we'll process that. Um, <laughs> to close you out, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to give you not a uh, question at all, just a little bit of information, a little FYI for y'all. This comes from Ryan De La Rosa, uh, who is, of course, uh, uh, referencing a podcast you guys did that I don't think I was on, but maybe I was, but it's about sidekicks, which I don't remember us talking about. Great. <laughs> Ryan writes in to mm. patreon.com slash kind of funny, just like you can. It says on your episode for Monday, August 16th, you guys brought up the Jonathan Brandis slash Chuck Norris movie sidekicks. My childhood has a sort of neat connection to that movie. It was filmed in Houston, and I grew up and in a Houston suburb called Dickinson. Uh, I'm not sure who set it up, but kids from my schools all over the metro era were area were chosen to be extras in the big tournament at the end of the movie. I wasn't selected, but several of my classmates were. Also, there's a karate school in Dickinson run by a guy named Al Garza. I took lessons there when I was a kid. I'm 39 now, so it's been a around a while. Al Garza got to act as one of the fighters in the tournament. If I recall, he was wearing the blue gi and got beat up pretty quickly. I remember him hanging around, hanging some pictures of him and Chuck Norris around the school after the filming. Fuck as a 10-year-old, it didn't get much cooler than that. Keep up the good work, fellas. Ryan De La Rosa. <laughs> Hell yeah, Ryan. Thank there you was, for that moving there was story. Nothing, there was nothing cooler than Jonathan Brandis and Chuck Norris just side to side, back to back, side kicking it up. Side like, kicking, God damn, dude. what a movie. Dude, side my kick. buddy, I'll tell you what, though. I'll tell you what. This this reminds me of my buddy Mike Marchica back in the day uh, was an extra in the Karate Kid because they filmed that in Downey. And he was an extra at the All-Valley Tournament, which was weird. I love that. And Tim, I think, would have had a better reaction to that than the rest of you guys did. Great, Ladies and gentlemen, face. that's the end of the Kind of Funny podcast. Remember, the show isn't over. We're going to patreon.com slash kind of funny to give you your Patreon exclusive post show. Remember, each and every week, four, sometimes five best friends gather on this table, each coming to bullshit with each other about whatever it is they want to bullshit about. If you want to bullshit with us, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny, writing with your questions, get the show ad free, watch it live as we record it, and get that post show we're about to do. However, if you have no bucks to toss our way, no big deal, you can keep up with us on youtube.com slash kind of funny roosterteeth.com and podcast services around the globe each and every week twice a week often with guests for now it's post show time but if you're not following us until next time it's been our pleasure to serve you